I want a Veloster Turbo, but I don't want to look like a dickhead. Dude, I don't need a brand new Camaro. Yo, dude. I don't need an upvote arrow. Yo, dude. Call me umlaut cause I'm over you. All I need is an Elantra and I tell her you'll do. Hyundai made a sleeper. Huh. Playing against type, huh? Over the past five to ten years, whenever Hyundai made a performance car, it looked like Knuckles the Enchidna on TRT. It was very aggressive, very edgy, very, we're making performance cars now, we're Hyundai. But this Elantra GTN line is like the protagonist from Rolling Thunder. Remember that video game? Blank. Featureless and badass. Underneath, this is a Veloster Turbo. The tune is a bit more civilized, and this 1.6 liter gas direct injected turbo makes a solid 201 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque. This has a 7 speed dual clutch automatic, but a 6 speed manual is available, so bless. The factory tune puts most of the power in the mid and upper mid rev range where a lot of people will be using it. The way you use a GTN line is to click down two gears with the paddle shifters, merge onto I-95 from the blue route, mash the skinny pedal, and the ECU will hold the revs right to red line, and the little integrated turbo is quietly whizzing. This has one of those exhaust manifold turbo combinations. I was looking under the hood in this thing, and I'm like, where's the turbo? I can't see it. Oh, it's built into the exhaust manifold, which is kind of weird because if you ever blow this turbo on the thing or the, or the, or the, you know, you get it hot or something like that, I think you have to replace the entire headers. Anyway, it's doing, it's doing its job. And then the ECU realizes that you're not going to shift up anymore. So it drops you out of manual mode and back into automatic mode. And you're up a gear, and now you're doing 99 miles an hour, which is the recommended merge speed for that stretch of I-95 by PHL. Hyundai Elantra GTN line. If Target were a car. I almost expected to find a Starbucks and a Pizza Hut Express in here. It has that consumer comfort aura. Okay, ready for this? Windows XP shutdown sound. It projects baby-proof reassurance that everything is on the level. What the hell? I just came in here to get a notebook. How am I $6,000 in the hole, and why does one peach cost $1.49? This car comes with the inline four-cylinder, 1.6 liter turbo, GDI, at 1.6 liters. It's been Elantra's calling card since... This, this vehicle launched in 1990. Of course, plenty of Elantras had 1.6 liter straight fours, but, but whatever. This was just an opening for us to talk about history. You see, the Elantra was intended to take the spot of an outgoing mid-size Hyundai Stellar, which hadn't even been available in most markets anyway. The Elantra was a solid alternative to most cars in its class because it was offered at a lower price point than most cars. It's cheap. I mean, not hot dog at a Lehigh Valley football game cheap, but cheaper than the alternatives. Fast forward 30 years, and the Elantra is in its seventh generation, which launched a whole year earlier than intended. Now, there's no official reason for this that we could find other than the vague rumor that sales were falling due to the design of the sixth generation, and Hyundai wanted a fresh start as soon as possible. But this is still a car that was moving some 200,000 units in 2018. And even though the number dropped to 175 last year, that, is that really a disastrous number? I don't know. What we do know is that Hyundai confirmed that 2020 would be the last year for the Elantra GT and the GTN line, thanks to the brand's larger shift toward SUVs like the Venue, the Kona, and the Palisade, which makes this feel all the more special, even if special doesn't always translate to exciting. The N-Line offers you the dual-clutch automatic transmission, which means you're saddled with paddle shifters, and I'm sure not all of them are bad. Don't worry, there's a manual version of this car. But in a Breaking Bad kind of way, half measures don't cut it. And yes, you can go faster with this gearbox than the manual because human error is factored out of the shifting equation. A lot closer. Oh, 
that's good. That's good. Blah 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 manuals. Ugh, I know, I know. Gen X are the new boomers. I get it. I'm aging. Roman is aging. You're aging. Don't believe me? Test the skin on your balls. I promise you it's not as elastic as you remember. Treasure the ability to bend over without having to reach for a bottle of Icy Hot. Because father time is coming for that ass. Elantra GT N-Line. A car for someone who is over the car scene. I'm done racing. I'm tired of people trying to race me. I'm over blow-off valves and flexing vinyl stickers. I don't want to accidentally inherit a beef with Troy because I didn't compliment his Acura TSX sport wagon enough. I just want a zippy fun car that emancipates me from drama. So the end line is like a Honda Accord V6 6MT, a Forester XT, a Volkswagen Phaeton, the Chevy SS, Abdominal and DJ format, Google Pixel, all of the vibes, none of the drama of the scene. Which makes me wonder if Hyundai ever intended the Elantra GT N line to be a thing, because it's not outstanding. It's quick, but not blistering. It's fast, but unboasting. It's comfortable, but it's not business class. Look, modesty doesn't sell performance cars. Modesty doesn't sell performance cars new. In, in 25 or 30 years, this will be an enthusiast darling. But with an MSRP of $25,000 with predictable black mage markups to $28,000, it's out of the budget for anybody younger than Generation X. The Elantra is such a staple of America's highways that it's almost unnoticed, like the basic hamburger that McDonald's sells. They still sell it. Does anybody buy those things? And then on the other end, I don't know, I get nostalgic about the Arch Deluxe, which I think was the best value, the, the most amount of food for the least amount of money that they made. Ah, the 90s. I'm sorry. Anyway, this Elantra N-Line package Remember the Mazda Speed Miata? The best Miata? It only existed in 2004 and 2005. And the story goes like this. Enthusiasts say, Why won't you make a Turbo Miata? Give me a Turbo Miata! And then Mazda goes, Okay, here's one. And the enthusiasts go, Oh, you're charging for it? Eh, never mind. And that's the story of this GTN line. You got the fast Elantra you always wanted. But aside from Renee, I don't know who's buying these things. Because one of the best things about this car is the heated powered seats with lumbar support. Because age changes the things you value. And lumbar support is up there. And before long, you're wearing suspenders and cargo shorts and marking the passage of time by the changing price of canned beans. But you're still somehow in a body much younger than all that, and the cognitive dissonance will keep you up at night. You'll go searching for an exciting car, and come across this, and end up taking yourself into it because, well, it's nice. It's good. It's fine. It'll do. Oh, neat. A panoramic sunroof. High beam assist. And oh, driver attention warning. And hey! You get smart cruise control with stop and go. Oh, neato. Lane keep assist and active braking. That's a thing. Hey, look, Martha. We get forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection so we don't run over the Williams boy for the third time this quarter. Really, this is a features car. It's not the main artist. It's the guest rapper with a strong verse. Because while you get stuff like multi-link independent rear suspension, full LED headlights including daytime running lights, and 18-inch N-Design alloy wheels, you also get a wireless phone charging pad in the front center console so you never have to worry about your phone dying in the middle of a Case Files podcast, 
The idea is to nestle you into like the flabby grandma arms of reassuring comfort, the type of certainty that leaves no room for your faith to waver. Hyundai wants you to know, in a very corporate sense, that it is here for you, like a parent who doesn't care that you're collecting Pez dispensers at age 34, as long as you're still alive one day to give them grandchildren. You also get the Connected Care System, which is one of the three different Hyundai Blue Link packages, the other being Remote and Guidance. So the package that comes standard with this car has features like in-vehicle service reminders and service scheduling, a monthly health report, and diagnosis and roadside assistant. But eh, you don't get remote start, but you do get a complimentary three-year trial enrollment in this connected car system. But it's about $200 per year if you do enroll for the next package up. But unlike most companies that have you over the barrel of your own forgetfulness, Hyundai will actually send you a notice that your trial is almost over before they charge your credit card. So good on them, I guess. Of course, the focus on features doesn't mean there aren't things to like about the end line at the operational level. Hyundai apparently fixed gear slippage issues, which is born out of how smoothly it does shift, even considering the dual-clutch transmission. Really, this car feels like a hybrid in its burnished, almost glassy feel, like you're rolling around on delicate surfaces despite being on Pennsylvania back roads. It's a eerily quiet turbo, but then, well, we're post-diesel gate, so it feels like everything has a turbo these days. This car is currently sitting at 1,934 miles, and there's every expectation it'll be around for well over 100 times that number. Because what you're paying for is comfort, not simply of the body, but of the mind. It's a car with every intention of seeing you through the good years. Fuel economy is 25 city and 32 highway for a combined 28. I can note of this on the GoPro for myself. This is the first time I've seen something like this. Aero. Yes, I know I have low battery, thank you. Uh, Aero on the muffler. A little lip on the back here to smooth air coming over the muffler right onto the, I guess, rear splitter. Look at that. Now Hyundai says it can do this turbo with 87 octane but Renee gives it 93. It's sort of weird. It's, it's, it's like, okay, this is a performance car, but it's saying it does it on 87. There's probably some asterisks there. Like there's a big timing compromise and the electronic throttle is probably going to step right in there if you put 87 into it just to keep this thing from knocking. Oh, on the subject of the manual, it's an indoctrination brochure full of back pats and warnings. See, you open the manual of this and you get this brief introduction that goes like, Congratulations and thank you for choosing Hyundai. We are pleased to welcome you to the growing number of discerning people who drive Hyundais. And then the manual goes on to warn you that two-way radios or cell phones that are improperly installed or adjusted could adversely affect the electronic systems. Since this is equipped with electronic fuel injection, I, I know, even the manual doesn't know that this has a GDI. Anyway, cool. Thanks for that. The manual also cautions against modifying the car. Your Hyundai should not be modified in any way. The reason being that it could mess with the performance and safety or simply just void your warranty. This is like turn off your cell phone while we're taxiing to the runway. It, it, it reads much like legal jargon meant to cover Hyundai's ass in the event that you get it lowered and have your feelings hurt when you get roasted on message boards for lowering a Hyundai, which is a lot like getting called out for being seen shopping at Walmart by someone who is also shopping at Walmart. And to keep all of their bases covered, the owner's handbook has a map to show you where the nearest Hyundai regional office is, followed by contact info on alternative dispute resolution. This includes variation by state based on things like lemon law rights. It seems designed to be posted to mildly interesting in five years. But ultimately, the Hyundai Elantra GTN line is fine. The very definition of it.
other than the scavenger hunt for the turbo, this is about as uncomplicated as a performance car can get. It's not sexy looking, but who buys an Elantra expecting to be the center of attention? This will one day become a cult classic or a regular car of the future. And through the rose-colored glasses of the people who grew up around this car, the N-Line will gain future classic status because the passage of time makes legends of us all. But in 2020, not a single jaw will slack upon your arrival in this car. But your existence in the automotive community can't revolve entirely around impressing other people or even impressing yourself. It's about being satisfied with the choices you've made and not allowing anyone, even some rando internet car reviewers, to tell you it wasn't the right one. You I do, need a new do, car do, and there's do, just no way. Do, just okay, do, I'm listening to Just O'Shea. Now I'm browsing do, all the Craigslist ads in town. Do, no sound, but natural born killers abound. You if I do, knew what I wanted do, to say, I would have said it. If I knew what I wanted to get, I'd go get it. It's true, do, there are things that I wanted to see beneath the tree, but they're not so important to me, so you'll do.